We want to look at the reaction. Two nitrogen monoxide plus chlorine gives us two NOCl. That's our overall reaction. Uh, I'm going to give you step one, again, determined by experiment. is going to be nitrogen monoxide plus chlorine. These are both gases. I'm simplifying by leaving out the states. That's going to give us NOCl2. Uh, I took away the arrow for a reason. And then we have our NOCl2 in our second reaction plus NO produces 2 NOCl, and that's step two. Now I want to point out to you that this first step is at equilibrium, and that's going to prove critical in helping us understand the rate determining step. Our second step is not at equilibrium. All right? So the first step in a series of reactions that is not at equilibrium is the rate determining step. So any step previous to the rate determining step will be at equilibrium. Any step before rate determining step will be at equilibrium. And so that will help you determine which step is, it's a clue in determining which step is the rate determining step. Another thing that's important is that this reaction is, we're going to give it the rate constant K1, not equilibrium constant, but rate constant of K1. And this will be K Two. Now, because this first reaction's at equilibrium, it also has a backward rate constant, which is K minus 1, and that's going to be useful in determining our rate law. So if we use this second reaction as our rate determining step, our rate law then is the rate's going to be equal to K2 times NOCl2 times NO. Okay, now there's a problem with this, and here it is. This is an intermediate, and we don't want intermediate in the rate law. So what we need to do is get rid of this intermediate in the rate law. And we're going to do that through substituting other species for NOCl2. And in order to substitute, we're going to use the equilibrium. So I'm going to use rate of equation 1 is going to equal K1 times NO. That was, can't see it at the top of the screen, but it's there, NO times CL2. So that's going to be rate 1. But this is going to also equal the rate of the reverse reaction going the opposite direction. So that's going to equal K minus 1. It's not that these two constants are equal, but the rates of forward and reverse are equal. So K times NOCl2, K minus 1 is equal to K1 times NO times Cl2. Now we can solve for NOCl2 and substitute. Okay? So, we'll substitute that in the rate law. So, sub, uh, solving for NOCl2, that's going to equal K1 
k1 over k minus 1. Again, those are not necessarily equal, so this doesn't equal 1, times NO times Cl2. Now, what I'm going to do is plug this in to my rate law. I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to keep that rate law there so you can see it. And this is going to be my rate. The rate law then is going to equal K2 times K1 over K minus 1. So a whole bunch of constants there. Times NO, so I'm substituting for NOCl2, times Cl2 times NO. Okay, that's from up here. So now I'm going to simplify this and say that the rate is equal to some big constant times NO squared times Cl2. So that is now my rate law for this overall reaction. So you can see that this is second order with respect to nitrogen monoxide and with respect to chlorine it's first order and overall it's third order. So let's now move this up and what we want to do is draw our mechanism. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to have two hills. Which hill is going to be bigger, the first one or the second one? You should have said the second one because that's the rate determining step. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a small hill and then a large. And remember, the hill represents the energy. So this is going to represent my activation energy for the first reaction and this is my activation energy for the second reaction. Alright, we're starting off with NO and Cl2 and what I'm going to get is a transition state where there's the bond forming between the NO and the Cl2. This is a transition state. Then I'm going to get NOCl2, which is then going to react with nitrogen monoxide. What's this called? That's my intermediate that we had to substitute for to get out of the rate law. And then I'm going to have another transition state. So it's important you know the difference between a transition state and an intermediate. So I'm going to be breaking the bond with one of the CLs and forming it with this other nitrogen monoxide and I'm going to end up with 2 NOCl. So that's my overall product. This is going to be represented by rate constant 1 and this is rate constant 2 and what I want to point out to you right now is which is greater K1 or K2. Remember, if you have a greater rate, if it's faster, you're going to have a bigger K. So K1 is going to be greater than K2 because it, this first reaction goes faster. It's just the opposite for the activation energy. Activation energy 1 is way less than activation energy 2. So again, knowing the size of the k's could also help you determine 
the rate determining step. So this is going to be elementary step one and from here it's going to be elementary step two and there's our mechanism.